Hello, welcome everyone to my channel Mac Pandit Learning Hub. In this session, we will be talking about certain special cases while calculating the degree of freedom of a mechanism. If you remember, in the previous session, we provided the Kutchbeck criteria to calculate the degree of freedom of a mechanism, which is given by f is equal to 3n minus 1 minus 2j minus h. In certain cases, the Kutchbeck criteria it doesn't hold true and produces erroneous results. So now in this session, we will be talking about those special cases where the Kutchbeck criteria is not going to produce accurate degree of freedom. So let us see those special cases. So the first case is that of redundant link and redundant kinematic pair. So let us see what is a redundant link or a redundant kinematic pair. So sometimes in a mechanism it may happen that one or more link or kinematic pairs they are not introducing any extra constraint in the mechanism. Such a link or kinematic pair is called a redundant link or a redundant kinematic pair. Now let's say if n r is the number of redundant links in the mechanism and j r is the number of redundant kinematic pair in the mechanism then the Kutchbeck criteria it gets modified and the new degree of freedom for the mechanism it can be calculated by 3 n minus n r minus 1 minus 2 j minus j r minus h. Now let us take the example of a mechanism and try to understand what actually is meant by a redundant link or a redundant kinematic pair. Now in this mechanism you can see here this mechanism it consists of five links. So let me name these links. So let us name this fixed link as link 1, then this link as link 2, this link as link 3, then this link as link 4, this link as link 5. Now if you observe carefully, if we remove any of the links 2 or 4 or 5, the relative motion between the links in the mechanism is not going to change. For example, let's consider this link 2 as an input link and this link 5 as an output link. Now if you remove this link 4, the relative motion between this input and output link it is not going to change. Now let's repeat this operation but this time let us remove this link 2 and consider this link 4 as input link and this link 5 as output link. Now here if you observe even if we remove this link 2 the relative motion between this input link 4 and the output link 5 is not going to change. The same can be applied to the relative motion between this input link 2 and the output link 4 and again at this time we are considering that we are ignoring this link 5. Now in this case it's very obvious that the actual degree of freedom of this mechanism is equal to 1. Now let us see what will be the degree of freedom of this mechanism when we are going to apply the Kutchbeck criteria. Now here if you see the total number of links in this mechanism is 5. Now let us count the number of revolute pairs. So this will be one revolute pair. So I will just mention this thing as 1R. Then again this is the second revolute pair 2R. Then this is the third revolute pair 3R. Then this is the fourth revolute pair 4R. Then this is the fifth revolute pair 5R. And then this is the sixth revolute pair 6R. Now you can see here the total number of revolute pairs in this mechanism are equal to 6. Now if we calculate the degree of freedom of this mechanism it will become equal to f equal to 3 then n minus 1 that is 5 minus 1 minus 2j. So this will become f is equal to 0. So now you can see here when we are applying Kutchbeck criteria to calculate the degree of freedom of this mechanism the degree of freedom value which we are getting is equal to 0 which is not true in the actual situation which is not true in the actual situation. So now the Kutchbeck criteria it gets modified as I mentioned before and the resultant degree of freedom 
it has to be calculated by this particular equation. Now let us apply this equation and try to understand that whether we are getting the accurate results using this equation or not. So in this case, let's say this is my redundant link. So as soon as we remove this redundant link, link 4, so nr it become equal to 1 and jr it become equal to 2. Since we are removing one redundant link and at the same time we are removing two kinematic pairs also. Now in this case, let us see what will be the degree of freedom of this mechanism. So now here you can see we will apply this formula f equal to 3 then total number of links n is 5 minus nr 1 minus 1 minus 2 j minus jr. So now here j is 6 and jr is equal to 2 right. So once you apply this formula so this will become 3 multiplied by 3 minus 2 into 4. Now you can see here that we are actually getting the actual degree of freedom as 1. Now let's take another example of a mechanism with redundant kinematic pair. Now if you observe here, right, here in this mechanism we have two kinematic pairs. One is this one and another is this one. Now let's assume this link as the input link and this link as the output link. Now if you observe if we remove either one of these kinematic pairs the relative motion between the input and output links is going to remain the same. So this is one example of a redundant kinematic pair. Now let's talk about another special case which is called as redundant degree of freedom. Now sometimes in a mechanism it can happen that one or more links they can move and at the same time their motion is not disturbing the motion of other links. Such a mechanism is said to have redundant degrees of freedom. So in this case the Kutchback criteria it gets modified something like this that is 3 multiplied by n minus nr minus 1 minus 2 j minus jr minus h minus fr where fr is equal to the redundant degrees of freedom in the mechanism. Now let us try to understand the redundant degree of freedom through some examples. Now in this mechanism if you see here that the motion of this green roller it is not causing any effect on the motion of other links in the mechanism. This green roller it simply spins about its own axis and doesn't disturb the motion of this link, this link or the remaining links. So this mechanism is said to have a redundant degree of freedom because of the presence of this roller. Now let us again try to calculate the degree of freedom of this mechanism using Kutchback criteria and then again let us try to use the modified equation and try to understand that how the Kutchback criteria in this case it is going to produce false results. Now let me start calculating the degree of freedom of this mechanism. So obviously first we will calculate the total number of links in the mechanism. So let me name this fixed link as link 1. Then this is link 2, this is link 3, this is link 4, then again this is link 5 and this is link 6. So the total number of links in this mechanism is equal to 6. Now let me just count the number of revolute pairs in this mechanism. Now here the number of revolute pairs, let's start counting from this revolute pair. So this is 1R, this is 2R, then this is 3R, then this is 4R then this is 5R. So total 5 revolute pairs are there in this mechanism. Now again if you observe carefully this mechanism it also contains two higher pairs. So one is this one, 
one H in the second higher pair is this one two H. So the number of higher pairs is equal to two. So if we calculate the degree of freedom using the Kutchbeck criteria, it will be given by three six minus one minus two five minus two. So this will become fifteen minus ten minus two. So in this case, you can see here the degree of freedom which we are getting using the Kutchbeck criteria is equal to 3. Now let us try to apply this formula here and try to calculate the actual degree of freedom. So in this case you can see here the redundant kinematic pair in the redundant link and redundant kinematic pair they are equal to 0. So what we are going to do we are going to simply use this formula 6 minus 1 minus 2 into 5 right and minus 2 and then subtract one redundant degree of freedom which is equal to 1 in this case right from this entire equation. So in this case the actual degree of freedom let me denote it with f prime which you are getting is equal to 2. So now you can see here basically the actual degree of freedom is 2 that means at least two independent coordinates will be required to specify the motion of the links in the mechanism. However, the degree of freedom which we were getting using the Kutchbeck criteria was equal to 3. So here you can see the Kutchbeck criteria it produces false result. So let's take another example of a mechanism with redundant degree of freedom. So as you see here in this mechanism the total number of links is equal to 4. So let me just name these links as link 1, then link 2, then link 3, then link 4. Now it can be easily observed here that the red link that is the link 3 it can slide relative to this prismatic pairs without imparting any motion to the links 2 and 4. So this link 3 it is not causing any motion to the rest of the links and that's why this link 3 it is generating a redundant degree of freedom in the mechanism. So again in this case if you observe if we rotate this link 2 relative to this link 3 then no output motion will be obtained at the link 4. So that means the actual degree of freedom of this link it should be equal to 0. Now let us apply the Kutchbeck criteria in the modified degree of freedom equation to figure out whether the actual degree of freedom it matches with the value 0. So here let us first apply the Kutchbeck criteria. So as per the Kutchbeck criteria the degree of freedom it is equal to f then 3 n minus 1 so the total number of links is 4 minus 1 minus 2 j the total number of lower pairs. So basically two revolute pairs are there and then we have two prismatic pairs. So this is 1p and let's say this is 2p. So the total number of lower pairs is equal to 4. So you can see here the degree of freedom as per the Kutchbeck criteria it is coming equal to 1. But as I mentioned before we can easily observe that even if we rotate this link 2 no motion will be obtained at the link 4. So let us try to calculate the actual degree of freedom let me denote it with f prime using this formula. So it's very obvious since the number of redundant degree of freedom fr is equal to 1. So we will subtract, we will simply subtract 1 from the variable f. So f minus 1 this will become equal to 0. With this I would like to conclude this session and hope to see you in the next session. Thank you.